If we were to consider all functions in general, some can be categorized as even and some as odd, and many, actually most, functions are neither even nor odd. An even function has this characteristic. Every point on its graphed curve has an associated point directly across the y-axis. An even function's graph is symmetrical about the y-axis, a mirror image. An odd function has this characteristic. Its graph is symmetrical across the origin. Every point has an associated point directly across the origin. So an odd function's graph is the same when spun around 180 degrees. The words even and odd come from the one-term exponential functions that generate the characteristic when graphed. Even exponents yield even functions, and odd exponents yield odd functions. And here's what we're told to know about even and odd functions. For an even function, f of negative x equals f of x. And for an odd function, f of negative x equals negative f of x. I remember being so frustrated when I saw this simple chart in high school. It seemed like someone sprinkled negative signs randomly on the page, told me it was important, and expected me to memorize it. But please, spare yourself my grief and look at it this very simple way. Let's consider an even function and choose a value for x. The function's value at x is f of x. y equals f of x. Now let's take the opposite of x, negative x, if x was positive. What's the function's value at negative x? Or, what's f of negative x? Due to symmetry, we can see that it's the same value as f of x. For even functions, f of negative x equals f of x. The value on one side of the y-axis is always the same as the value on the other side for even functions. Mirror image. Now let's consider an odd function. A positive value for y yields y equals f of x. Like we did before, let's plug in the opposite of x, negative x, into the function. We ask again, what's f of negative x? For odd functions, it's the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction from f of x. For odd functions, f of negative x equals negative f of x. The value on one side of the y-axis is always the opposite of the value on the other side for odd functions. Let's take one more look at these identities. They're identities because they're always true, at least for even and odd functions, regardless of the value of x. This side asks the question, what happens on the opposite side of the y-axis? And this side answers the question, same value or opposite value? even function or odd function. So, why are we talking about this in trigonometry? Because cosine is an even function. And sine is an odd function. In fact, cosine and its reciprocal, secant, are the even trig functions. The other four trig functions are odd. We'll focus on sine and cosine since, as we know by now, the others can be expressed in terms of sine and cosine. As with so many other trig topics, framing this in the context of a unit circle can shine a light on our understanding. Here's the cosine of theta. Here's the cosine of negative theta. Cosine negative theta equals cosine theta. Same. Here's the sine of negative theta. Sine negative theta equals negative sine theta. Opposite. Sometimes these odd and even trig identities are called reflection identities. In fact, there are more reflection identities reflected about different axes. I'll cover these in the next video, TR-37. Let's do a proof. Prove 1 plus sine theta times sine negative theta all over 1 plus cosine negative theta equals cosine squared theta minus cosine cubed theta all over sine squared theta. Well, the left-hand side looks a little more complex, at least it has more terms, so let's start there. Also, the negative thetas are strong hints that we'll use reflection identities. 
we can immediately replace sine negative theta with negative sine theta, which I show in blue. In the numerator, we now have sine theta times negative sine theta, which is negative sine squared theta. The numerator 1 minus sine squared theta is identical to cosine squared theta by the Pythagorean identity. In the denominator, cosine negative theta equals cosine theta, so we make that substitution. The denominator is a good candidate for a conjugate pair, so we multiply by its conjugate fraction 1 minus cosine theta over 1 minus cosine theta. Multiplying the numerator across yields cosine squared theta minus cosine cubed theta, and we're on the right track because checking above, this matches the numerator of the right-hand side. Multiplying the conjugates in the denominator yields the difference between their squares, 1 minus cosine squared theta. Of course, this is identical to sine squared theta, and we've proven the identity. We used reflection identities twice in this proof. If you see a negative angle, that's a strong indicator to replace it. Replace cosine negative theta with cosine theta, and replace sine negative theta with negative sine theta. There are also reflection identities across different axes. We'll cover them in TR-37.